Welcome to SparkMap. SparkMap is built and run by a team of data people who collect, clean, and aggregate data from reliable secondary sources. We make these data available through two powerful data tools, the assessment and map room. Need to build a community needs assessment or gather more data about your community? Use SparkMap to spend less time researching and more time implementing positive change. Hello, and welcome to SparkMap. I'm Shay, and today we are going to explore population and housing data from the 2020 decennial census of population and housing. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the decennial census. Then we'll walk through map layers from this data set in the SparkMap map room. Lastly, we will explore the population living in group quarters indicator in the SparkMap community needs assessment and talk about how you can use this data in your community. Let's get started. To begin, let's talk about the decennial census. The decennial census is a count of the people living in the United States that happens every 10 years as mandated by the Constitution of the United States. The census is not only important because it provides population and housing information, but it is also used for apportionment. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, apportionment is the process of dividing the 435 seats in the House of Representatives among the 50 states based on the population figures collected during the decennial census. The information collected in the decennial census also contributes to congressional and state legislative redistricting. Now that we know the purpose of the U.S. decennial census, let's talk about the information that is collected. The 2020 decennial census was the 24th time since its establishment in 1790 that the U.S. population was counted. This census was also noteworthy because it was the first time households could complete the survey online. Census participants were asked nine questions to be completed for each individual in a household. These questions included the number of people living in a household on April 1st, 2020, the type of residence, and demographic information including name, sex, age, date of birth, if the individual is Hispanic, Latino, or of Spanish origin, and the individual's race. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many operational adjustments were made to the collection and dissemination of this data, resulting in delays and the release of data in multiple waves. The latest release in May 2023 has been accessed and analyzed by the SparkMap team and is now available on SparkMap. Let's take a look at the various layers available to all in the SparkMap map room. Right now, I'm in the SparkMap map room. If I search Decennial Census 2020, 53 results pop up with map layers ranging from population change to predominant race and ethnicity and population living in various group quarters. I'm going to go ahead and select the change in resident population, occupied housing units, and population living in group quarters for college, correctional, and military individuals, and add those to the map. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And right now we have a lot of layers on the map, so I'm going to go ahead and turn all of them off by clicking this checkbox except for the change in resident population percentage. So now I only have one layer on. And as you'll see, this is one of our more basic layers that we have from the decennial census for a couple of reasons. First, the geography is by state, so it's fairly large. Second, it's comparing the population of states between 2010 and the 2020 census. However, we can still gain valuable information from this map, 
like drawing initial conclusions that the population in Illinois, Mississippi, and West Virginia fell, whereas the population over in Utah, in Idaho, and in Texas experienced some of the largest growth. By clicking on a state, we can see the total population in 2019, as well as the percentage of population change from 2020 to 2010. If we go ahead and turn off the resident population, change in resident population layer, and turn on occupied housing units, we will see information pertaining to the percentage of housing units in a country, a county, I'm sorry, that are occupied. If we click the ellipses over here and select data info, we can see that a housing unit is considered a house, apartment, group of rooms, or single room occupied. As we close out of that and click around the map, we can see more information about housing occupied units in each county. An additional reason that I chose this layer is to demonstrate that much of the Census 2020 data is available at different geographical levels. If we can see that over here. For example, state, county, tract, and zip code. As well as different data types, which we'll see here, such as percentage and then our total. And if we click around, we will see that you um, can still see the percentage of occupied housing units as well as the total number of occupied housing units in your geography area, which right now we still have county selected. So this just allows for some more robust support in your reports and proposals. I am going to go ahead and turn off this map layer and lastly, I want to highlight three layers available in the map room for free that we are going to talk about more in the community needs assessment. Right now, we're looking at a subset of the population that live in group quarters. These are separate from the population that live in housing units. Instead, group quarters are typically characterized by groups of unrelated people that live in a property owned by an organization that provides housing. Common examples of group quarters include college residence halls, military barracks, and group homes. When I turn these on, you can gain more information about specific subsets of the population that live in group quarters around the country. These can be very helpful for assessing the population on a micro level and creating programs intended to benefit specific segments of the population. For example, right now, I am looking at Montgomery County in Tennessee, and I can see that there's 2.14% of the population in group quarters, and I am looking specifically at military facilities. So there's 1,300 individuals living in military facilities, and I can go through and switch between my layers to look instead at um, those living in college facilities, and then additionally, those living in correctional facilities. So that's how we can see all three of those layers and kind of navigate between them when we have all of them turned on on the map. These map layers are always available for free on SparkMap in the map room, but I want to dive a little bit more into this population living in group quarters layer in our community needs assessment. So I am going to navigate to that by hovering over Create, New Community Needs Assessment. And let's create a new community needs assessment for Cook County, Illinois. Let's go over to Illinois, click on Cook County. If I scroll up, go to my data indicators. And we are going to look at our demographic indicators, which is where lots of these Census 2020 indicators will live. So you can see we have different types of information, um, such as total population, urban and rural population focusing on urban, urban and rural population focusing on rural data, incorporated, 
Um, and then down here you will see our group quarters population. Although I can select all indicators, it is important to note that I have a premium annual subscription. The group quarters population indicator is only available to our pro and premium subscribers. So the information that I am able to show you can be sourced from the map room as I previously showed you for free, but using the CNA is a much more efficient process. So I am going to select our group quarters population indicator and navigate over to reports. We'll give it just a second to load. And now we have our completed report looking at group quarters population for Cook County, Illinois. First, you'll see a general summary of the information that tells you the type of residences included here, as well as information on total population and those living in group quarters for our report area, which is Cook County, Illinois, the state of Illinois, and the country as a whole. What I'm most interested in showing you is the breakout data of group quarter population by facility type, which we'll see down here. In this section of the report, we've distilled all six map room layers into two simple graphics, a table and a pie chart. From this table, you are able to quickly assess information about segments of the population living in group quarters in Cook County, Illinois. For example, if I worked for a public health office wanting to target those living in group quarters and encourage hand washing during flu season, I could use this table to understand that my largest targets would be those living in long-term care facilities and those living in college dormitories. On the other hand, it would be a waste of time and resources to segment my messaging to those living in military barracks, as at this time, there are no individuals living in military barracks in Cook County, Illinois. This is just a time-saving use of selecting this indicator in the SparkMap Community Needs Assessment Report. Overall today then, we focused on decennial census data in the SparkMap Map Room and Community Needs Assessment. During our time, we learned background on the decennial census, learned more about map layers from this data set available for free in the map room, and walked through the pro indicator group quarters population and a potential use case of this in the community needs assessment. We hope you found this webinar insightful.